Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how to find the new mean and new standard deviation for the sum of two independent random variables. Then we will use normal approximation on the new distribution. Previously, we saw two distributions for GRE scores. We have the mean and the standard deviation for the verbal part of the exam and the mean and the standard deviation for the quantitative part. Suppose performance on these two sections is independent. Use this information to compute each of the following. Part A, the probability of a combined verbal plus quantitative score above 320. To answer this question, we're going to first need to find the new mean and the new standard deviation. What we really have is a sum, verbal plus quantitative. So to introduce a little notation, we're going to want mu sub v plus q as well as sigma sub v plus q. The mean of a sum should just be the sum of the means. So if we want the mean of the total score, we should be able to just add the means of the two sections. So we can just add the mean for the verbal section plus the mean of the quantitative section. And so that's going to be the 151 plus 153 is 304. For the new SD, we can't simply add the two standard deviations because the variation doesn't simply add like that. So we have to recall our Pythagorean theorem. The first one squared plus the second one squared equals the third one squared. So that's going to mean that the sigma sub v plus q is equal to the square root of the first one squared plus the second one squared. And so if we evaluate that, that's going to be the square root of the 7 squared plus the 7.76 squared, and that'll give us 10.4. Now we can find a z-score for this score of 320. So we're going to have our new x of interest minus the new mean or av that we just computed divided by the new sd. So that's going to be the 320 minus the 304 over the 10.4, which gives us 1.53. Now we want above 320, and it's given that these two distributions are normal, so the sum of the two will be normal as well. So we can do normal approximation on the sum. So to find the probability that z is bigger than 1.53 using the normal curve, we can grab a calculator, for example, a TI, and go second distribution, norm CDF. Our lower bound wants to be 1.53. We need a large upper bound, maybe 6. Should be good enough. And we'll get 0.063. So that will be our final answer for this part. Part B, the score of a student who scored better than 90% of the test takers overall. We found the new mean and the new SD previously, so we'll need to use those numbers. And now a, a sketch will help. We want the score um, of someone who scored better than 90% of the test takers. So we can imagine that this uh, score is going to be uh, in the upper half of the distribution. So it will have a positive z-score. So what is the z-score? such that that score is higher than 90% of the scores. To do that, we can again grab a calculator, and this time we have a percent, 90 percentile, and we want the corresponding z-score. So we're going to kind of do the inverse problem and choose inverse norm, and we want the 90th percentile, so we're onto that as a decimal. And that's going to give us a z-score of 1.28. So our z-score is 1.28. Now we know that z should be x minus the average over the sd. We know the z-score, we know the average, we know the sd. So we can fill those numbers in and then we have just x being the unknown value. So we solve for x and we get 317. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.